it is by chance, not design, that two films on the same subject have been released in China almost at the same time. They both tell a chilling story. Following the 1937 Japanese invasion of the city of Nanjing, an estimated 300,000 people were killed. John Raba was premiered in Beijing and then released in 750 cinemas simultaneously, a record for German film in China. Director Florian Gallenberger says he's not worried about competition from the Chinese-made film. I don't think the films will detract from each other. On the contrary, I hope that seeing one film will make people want to see the other, so they can compare. Gallenberger's award-winning film portrays the massacre as seen through the eyes of German businessman John Rabe. A staunch Nazi, Rabe used his party membership to construct a safety zone in Nanjing. He's thought to have saved the lives of some 200,000 Chinese. But Gallenberger's film has produced a mixed reaction both among film critics and cinema goers. The film is a compromise. There were hardly any scenes showing cruelty by the Japanese. The German angle on our history is important. He overemphasized Rabe's Nazi background and paid too little attention to the individual stories of the Chinese people. Today, John Rabe is considered a hero in China. Nanjing even has a museum dedicated to his memory. But still, it took Florian Gallenberger a long time to get permission to film in China. It wasn't so easy at first. In this story, the Chinese are the victims. But modern China wants to prove that it's a strong nation, and certainly not a nation that requires outside help from foreigners. But that's what's happened here. Rabe and other foreigners protected the Chinese from the Japanese army. Chinese director Lu Chuan also faced initial opposition from the authorities when he wanted to film his movie, City of Life and Death. The work tells the story of the killings in a way never before portrayed in China. He plays down the role of John Rabe and other foreigners. The film instead tells the story from the perspective of the Chinese civilians and the Japanese soldiers, continually changing back and forth between perpetrators and victims. For the past 60 years, Chinese films have only shown the Japanese as monsters, not as people. I wanted to show Chinese audiences that the Japanese are people. The worst thing is that people are capable of such acts. We Chinese are also people. So if we invaded another country, could we not also carry out such atrocities? For many cinema goers, the very idea is a scandal, both inconceivable and shocking. This humanization goes too far. I'm going to boycott Japanese products from now on. The Japanese army just didn't seem cruel enough. I hope that my country will continue to get stronger. And that kind of thing will never happen again. The bloodshed in Nanjing remains a huge stumbling block in Sino-Japanese relations today. A memorial site in the city honors the victims of the massacre, but it also serves as a reminder that Japan has never officially apologized. More than 70 years on, the two sides have yet to be reconciled. But perhaps these two films take a step forward. Though very different, they both provide a new take on history, one that is not primarily guided by hatred. Don't. We can now think about what happened more objectively, and that could help relations between China and Japan. Liu Chan now plans to show his film in Japan, as does Florian Gallenberger. Japan still disputes the death toll and says the incident has been exaggerated. So there too, the films are likely to cause controversy. More than 70 years on, there is no single view of what happened in Nanjing.